Hello everybody, I'm here with uh, Tim Bootstrap Bandit and Christian Rootsall. Um, we've been having a bit of a hack session here in Wales. Um, we've been working on a couple of projects, uh, but there's some nice interesting uh, news coming up, which is the Raspberry, pa Raspberry Blitz version 1.4 uh, is going to be coming out soon in the next couple of weeks. So I wanted to catch Christian now while I can and just ask him what's, um, what are some of the features we can expect in the new version of the Blitz. Um, and then I was also going to try and grab Tim as well, just to ask about you know LMPay and all the great things he's doing with LMPay. So. Uh, so yeah, so Christian, what's going on with the Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Blitz 1.4 um, and what do we expect in the new update? Yeah, uh, of course you get the uh, new LND and the new uh, Bitcoin Core with it, so I think that's kind of standard with, with coming with an update. But also kind of on the other apps you have on the uh, Raspberry Blitz, like the RTL is a complete new redesign now in there uh, that will ship with the 1.4 version. Um, and there's, um, maybe you saw it on the last version, we introduced very Ill experimental touchscreen support, so we worked a little bit more on that. You will see uh, now a little bit more graphic designed uh, touch screens with some, some already with some functions uh, behind it, with a little bit more graphics. So we're experimenting with this, uh, really liking your feedback on this, if this is the right direction, we want to build more for the next version of it. Um, and there is the, um, there's an experimental ButterFS support, so just for, for you maybe for, to know, on your hard drive that you have on the Raspberry Blitz, there is an X4 uh, format running. Um, that's kind of standard for Linux, but um, there were Linux people were thinking, oh, what can we do better in the future? So there is this where ButterFS, it's called BTRFS. It's yeah, I've heard of ButterFS, yeah. but I don't even really know what it is. What is it? Some, some people say Butter, <laughs> some people say BetterFS. So I don't know, there's some, at least some discussion about it. So what it brings in the end, it's like, it's allowing you two interesting things. So the one is that it allows you very easily to make rates. So you can combine uh, multiple kind of hard drives to one for better kind of uh, backup so so if one kind of fails the other one can repair and, and that kind of setups uh, and this is kind of also the idea which is you just put a small USB uh, device USB thumb drive like uh, 32 gigabytes you put to the um, to the recipe blitz USB port and then you can combine this one with a, with a partition on your hard drive that is in butter reverse and uh, this will give you kind of a backup kind of rate setup so so if your hard drive kind of fails you have a backup then still on, on your thumb drive. This is the one thing. The other one thing that gives you is snapshots. So you can make uh, at a certain point of time you say I want to make a backup at this, at this point in time and then everything else that gets written kind of uh, from then you can switch back to a snapshot so if you like. This is interesting then for for cases, for example, if your blockchain kind of get, gets corrupted, you can very quickly maybe switch back to a snapshot you did once a day. So, in a, in a, so if your blockchain gets corrupted, you maybe just have to catch up some hours and you should be very quickly back into the game and not having to re-download the whole blockchain. Just to let you know, this, uh, um, the Raspberry Blitz uh, ButterFS support is... Um, is uh, experimental, so at the moment default it's still do, is doing the X4, um, but uh, if, you're, if you're interested in that, you can read on the issue how to activate it, it's a bit tricky at the moment, but if you like to experiment with this or maybe add your experience with ButterFS to it uh, to make it maybe default for the next version, that would be great. Um, also with this topic related, um, they're mm -hmm. starting now um, to, have a com to make it easier to migrate, migrate a complete hard drive. Uh, for example, you would, would need to, to do this um, if you have an old X4 and you want to migrate to a ButterFS, you would have kind of copy, get, get your data out, out, uh, off the hard drive, format it and get it get in ButterFS and get your data back on. Um, this is the, there's also now in the 1.4 uh, script for that, so kind of back up all the app data. It will not back up your blockchain data, so you maybe need to download blockchain and validate blockchain again but all your kind of app data um, will be kind of also an easy way to export it from the blitz uh, downloaded it and then put it back on a, on a blitz so those are kind of also things that are getting more easy now especially for example if you want to migrate from an old hard drive with a mechanical hard drive to an ssd for example you have the same situation so those situations should get easier now for you um, yeah, that's kind of the, the stuff with the, with the ButterFS. There is um, coming up more and more switching to Tor by default. So we kind of step by step iterating to make Tor more present. So now you have the Tor v3 addresses for a lot of stuff you run on your, on your Raspberry Blitz. 
And this ties very nicely into the idea of having now more and more additional apps having on, on the Blitz. Because we now with the Raspberry Pi 4, we have a lot of new kind of power on the system. So um, this allows us allow, allows us now to run additional stuff on that. And like a BTC Pay server. Yeah, and exactly. So you have an Electrum a Rust server. So you can, can completely run uh, your Electrum server on your Raspberry Blitz and share it with friends or family. Um, so this is a good way, for example, so to connect your Trezor. For, uh, yeah, uh, really to, so you don't have to go anymore to a Trezor website and give them and, and kind of leak data to, to out what kind of wallets like you have. For development as well, if you're building some sort of wallet service, to have an Electrum server there, which you can sort of tap into. Yeah, yeah. So there comes a lot of benefits with that. So and it does it does need some time when you activate the feature feature under services on the new Raspberry Blitz 1.4. It takes some time to build an index thingy, but once it's ready, um, then you, you then it's running there and it's for your use. So that's served over Tor. Uh, you can choose. So if you have, if you have Tor activated, it uh, you can reach it over a Tor address too. Yeah. Um, if you don't have Tor activated, uh, it's always reachable on a, on a local IP. And of course, if you make those uh, ports open on your router, um, then you can have it like, or even from the outside, if you want to have it in, in that kind of way. Um, yeah, next besides, uh, let me take a look. We have the BTC Pay server also now as an, as an extra app you can install. Uh, that one at the moment is also, is also reachable from Tor, so you can reach it over Tor. What we didn't decide to do in this version is that it gives you kind of a big setup with a do domain or whatever, <coughs> because we want to maybe make this for the next uh, next version. But it's already there. You can install the complete BTC Pay server, have it running with on the Raspberry Blitz, and experiment with it. So if you ever wanted to take a look at that, it's now able to possible then with the new version to activate it and and play with it and see how you can make use of it. And by activate, I mean it's, it's just you just click a couple of buttons and then you can spin up yeah. a BTC Pay. Yeah. Because I know you've done a lot of work on on the install scripts. Yeah, there's just kind of automated into install scripts. So. Which is great. I mean, that's going to get BTC Pay server into many more people's hands, I think, because it's, you know, sometimes installing some of these things can be a little yeah. bit beyond some people, you know. So. Yeah, to make, to make experiences. So in the end, to, in the, in the, if you know the SSH menu you have, uh, there's a services section, and it's now longer, more and more longer list. So, so it, would, um, it would be sort of like the menu we can see here now, where we've got the... Um, uh, uh, yeah, the th that, that one down there. Yeah, that one, one down, down there. there. Yeah, yeah, that's the short one from the old version. Still, yeah, yeah, the yeah. next day. So you select the service and then run the service, and it right. just installs and, it and everything. Right, and this is the, also the way how you activate the touch screen. It's not default by the moment, but yeah. it's all those features. It's more. It's the idea of when you start up the Raspberry Blitz, it, sh it should just deliver you a very plain, a reduced setup. And so it's, yeah, with minimal attack vectors. Um, and then you have the possibilities to activate more and more services, and those service lists is growing at the moment kind of, kind of rapidly. Um, just to wrap up, what, what else do we have at, at extra services? Um, the new RTL. New RTL is Gorgeous. on there. Yeah, yeah they did the redesign. Um, yeah. but we went to the, we went, we're advancing Bitcoin, and you ran a workshop, and I have my Blitz 1.3. And then you had, <laughs> with the workshop, you had 1.4 installed on the other blitzes, and you were showing the new RTL. You'd, your tutorial was being, your workshop was through the new RTL, and I felt like such a plea with my old RTL. Like, the, the GUI is so much nicer now, it's lovely. Yeah, um, it's, it's coming nicely now. So, um, yeah, we use this for workshop. This is a good, uh, this is a good place. RTL is a good place if you really want to learn a little bit about node management. Not everybody likes to do it over uh, command line or something, so the, the, the web GUI is a really good place to start and gives you a good overview. Um, but this was already already in there in the old version, so this comes now with a new redesign. Um, there, just to wrap up, there will be also a BTC RPC Explorer, so you have your own kind of blockchain explorer you can uh, have running on your on your Raspberry Blitz. So, it, so this is interesting to see what 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 comes up with with this. So this is something to experiment with. There is this loop services um, that for loop out, for example. So the, the, this service is also now uh, installable. Or add, you can add this to your Raspberry Blitz. So we will see maybe in the future there will be additional settings you can do. Uh, so you say, for example, I want once a month, I want all my inbound capacity kind of freed up and send all my all all, all I have earned, earned in a shop, for example, mm. put this automatically 
uh, into uh, a hardware wallet. Oh, so it's like a sort of strike type service almost, like a six yeah. racing strike. You would like concatenate lightning payments and then output to a main. Yeah, without closing your channels. Sure, sure. You could always do it with like closing your channels yeah, and yeah. getting your funds back. But the loop out is the, is the service from Lightning Labs. Uh, it's open source, but uh, I think they're it's starting a service of their own. Yeah. Yeah. So and paid, for their first paid service. Is it closed and is it to become open? Is it not? I don't think it's open yet. The you mean the the. the the open source, you mean? It's open source. I think the basically it's open source, but I think I have to uh, uh, research again. But as far it's as I know, there is, I think, the central server still to coordinating stuff a bit. So yeah. it's not a completely kind of uh, peer decentralized thing. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but the clients and the software so far, the protocol for it is open source. And you can, you, it's a service. You can choose if you want to use it. gives you kind of a. It's really uh, cheap as well. I mean, it's not like a. Yeah. 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 It gives you a rate and you can always decide, oh, I'd prefer to just close my channels and not be depending on such a service. Um, but not closing your channels and keeping your inbound capacity maybe for, for a shop or whatever is, just makes sense. So you can go, you can develop now more and more the recipe blitz into a setup like what, what Strike is giving you. Um, so this is something for the Room 77 we, we're aiming at to have in. So you, so you, you are a shop, you want to, then you uh, have inbound capacity once established and then you get your little satoshi step by step fitting up a bit your inbound capacity and the once this is uh, enough for an on-chain kind of valid transaction like once a month for example it automatically then just transferred it to a uh, bitcoin address uh, into your hardware <coughs> wallet directly. it's great for onboarding yeah. 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 easy and, and this would be really the great nice setup then really you can really give a shop owner and you know like once a month he gets kind of uh, kind of all this all he earned on lightning into his hardware wallet this is a nice segue. I mean, if I mean, it's only this is a nice segue into Alan actually, because that's very similar. Yeah. Is Alan taking off that kind of service, kind of that? It's like detonating um, lightning. Yeah, well, getting your funds off lightning, off someone's like, you know, uh, well, like custodial thing, into on chain is actually like something I think will actually work. Um, and it's a way that people can't like you can actually like force like send it to them, whereas lightning you have to. You can't just send it to them, so they can keep it, you know. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, so you can actually, as a service, if you have like, if you're running like an Alan Pay type service, then you, yeah, you, you're like, well, you've got enough funds on here, it's scaring me. Can you please get them off? Yeah, you, know, you can't send. send I mean, I guess you could use Key Send now, kind of, but yeah. like, that's not nobody really does that. It's sort of Alan specific, isn't it? Yeah, that too. Um, but I've been working on uh, building out what I'm calling outsource custodial wallets. Won't be custodial forever, but just outsource wallet infrastructure to help uh, small lap developers bootstrap their apps um, and use uh, uh, like M5 stack sats that Ben's working on in the quickening uh, kind of plug into like use I mean, POS say, terminals and it's stuff. The, probably the easiest like way to quickly make a, a lightning wallet and then have API keys and then like send and receive and money and um, and then you've also got a bunch of other functionality built in like LN URL um, um, so you can use it for like things like ATMs and things uh, so no it's, 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 by, it's the easiest sort of service I've found and also like the it's, it's the uptime's brilliant on it you know that's been working on providing it as a service it's in the cloud right it's kind of still hosted by a third party but that's kind of the the point for people who don't want to uh, manage their own infrastructure yeah for dev stuff it's brilliant like if you don't if you're yeah. building something you have an idea but then you're like oh, I'm gonna yeah and i've been working and obviously on we want to all work towards having our own nodes it's very important but it's right. also quite nice to be able to just go and plug into something yeah and eventually funds, and so. eventually people i think will be able to have their own nodes and once the non-custodial maybe macaroon stuff gets a little bit more advanced and easier to do you know, eventually you'll be able to switch that and it won't be custodial anymore, but it'll be semi-custodial maybe, or, yeah. you know, the macaroons Scrub. will be right. Yeah, yeah to where like, you know, the, the LMP layer is kind of like middleware and your funds are kind of still on your own. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I've been working on just building out tools for developers like logging and webhooks and stuff, so. It's pretty cool as well, because so, we've been working for the past three days, mostly on the, the quickening, uh, merging the M5 stack um, and the quickening projects together, so it's just like one code base you can put on your device, select your payment uh, funding source, select the hardware you're using, it's easy to sort of set up. So we've been working on that, uh, but, but because we've been working on that, I've kind of seen Tim also working on MPay, 
and it's very much like just catering for you know developers they have an idea they want to build something he's like okay cool let, let me try and help you make that thing um so uh it's an i think it's a really nice approach to kind of just to in, encourage and work with the developers you know? i think it's a good segue into ln bits as like a more self-hosted option for kind of like some of the same functionality and kind of what we were building on with the the extensions and using it for uh, POS terminals and stuff. Yeah, I mean, LM Bits is, is kind of similar to LM Pay, um, but it's um, it's like, uh, I mean, LM Pay eventually will be um, free and open source. That's the plan. That's the plan. Um, uh, so you'll be able to run it yourself, and um, it should be really easy to work, so run it, because it'll just run on Apache, I guess, or? Yeah, it's PHP code base, uh, so it's not, I mean. Well, it's sort of LM Bits. It yeah, LM Bits is kind of like, um, uh, it's, it's if you again, if you want to start playing with your your you know your your LND node and you don't want to expose all your funds, so like I have my ATM, but I don't want to expose my ATM to my admin macaroon. I can use LN bits on top of uh, LN, LND and it, uh, just expose a certain amount of funds for the ATM to be able to withdraw from. Um, so again, it's kind of like maybe not aiming so much at the develop. I'm trying. To, I mean, obviously, I've built all the things which are built into LN bits and all the things we've, we've been working on LN bits uh, are, are, are the frustrations we've had with our like our own experiences dealing with like you know a lightning payment services where we want some functionality and then which is why i think your approach is brilliant because like you, you know you, you bug someone for functionality and then you know if, if they don't implement it you end off going off and implementing it yourself um uh so yeah so it, so it is with kind of developers in mind but it's not like uh we're not actively developing for developers now we're kind of actively just developing for our, i suppose our own stuff like you know the hardware and all that sort of stuff so and like stuff i'm interested in like i want to play around with lnur withdrawals so i'm, I'm making an extension so i can do lnur withdrawals and LN bits and um Blitz. On the Blitz. Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just one, what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I just want to let, want to get, get let, you, let you close there. Uh, yeah, no, there's one good thing is now what we did over the days is like I was uh, building an install script for the Allen bits. So, so in the end, it gives you an extra website you can host on your on your on your Blitz, and it gives you kind of sub accounts and install wallets you can you can set up uh, very quickly. So this would be very nicely being used for if you if you for example one account use. Uh, you put it out an ATM, this is one account. You have a POS system uh, at your store, there would be a one account. Or you can really use it, but that's what I'm looking for, like the LNUL support, uh, that you really print out a lot of little faucets uh, that are hosted on your recipe blitz at home, and you just drop them in the mailboxes of your neighbors you know, to have an easy way to get them started. Because in this, there's an Insta wallet in there, so they have some Satoshis to play. If they really take care about, they can transfer it in their own custody. custody, custody. Um, and the, I really like the idea of putting it maybe in the future date in there. If you don't care about the Satoshis in the next kind of 40 days, they're, they're, back, at, they're back, to, back, back at my end. So. Yeah, I like the LNURL stuff because it is like the, the, you can obviously run a, do LNURL things on your own, running your own server. But this, the LN bits thing, I just actually make it really easy to kind of make your own LNURLs. The only problem is like it's not because of the onion, the dot onion, HTTPS stuff, it's still... It's, it's still a hack. <laughs> yeah, well, what we found out is, is again that we, we would need, it, it seems like that the to have LN, LN URL working, uh, so you need HTTPS and a lot of wallets, that would be possible, you can serve HTTPS on a, on a Raspberry Blitz, nor, but normally with a self-signed certificate. And uh, it seems like, we have to research a bit more, but it seems like that awesome. some some wallets like uh, Wallet of Satoshi, etc., um, demand uh, a, a kind of valid certificate, uh, outside uh, S uh, certificate, <laughs> not a self-signed certificate. Um, so we can do this maybe with a with a Let's Encrypt stuff, but that would need a little bit more structured setup on the Raspberry Blitz. That's not Script there. Scripting. Yeah, that's not there for the 1.4. But what you have with 1.4, if you wanna wanna try it out, you have the LN bits also as a as a service there. You can activate it, and then you can play a little bit with it. And maybe if you find good solutions to make it uh, to to reach that goal, have it reachable from the outside, please share and let us know. Um, but then we think for the 1.4 at uh, 1.5, there will be a little bit more ways than to really have it reachable from the outside and a little bit like that. Yeah. What I tend to do, Christian hates it, is I do an SSH tunnel, but he doesn't like it because. No, it isn't very clean. It's very hacky. So, like, like Ngrok. Yeah, Ngrok. Yeah, Ngrok. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too easy. Yeah, but maybe, maybe in a structured setup, this could be one option. Yeah, that you have. but it's interesting. While you're working towards that and getting HTTPS support on the uh, for these services on the Blitz, like BTC Pay and Alan Bits, and hopefully Alan Pay one day. Um, uh, I went on the LNURL, one of the Telegram groups for the LNURL 
the people who are working on LNURL, and um, they were saying about Dot Onion and how they want it working. It should there should be an exception for Dot Onion because yeah. it's encrypted. So why, why not? Do we have to have this means like that every wallet has to be a way has has to have oh, a way to 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 work with 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 Tor network. Yeah. Uh, I think that's that can work for wallets of Satoshi or for Phoenix wallet or something like that because they all work with a with a with a service uh, with a with a server that's kind of catering you like a central service. Yeah, like a so they could they could have some bridge to the onion network so and deliver it to you because it's, then it's not for the privacy angle it's more re for making it easy uh, at least I mean, it gives you still some privacy but it's it maybe um, but it but still it's make it make it makes it easy to reach those services over the Tor network too so I would like to see this but in the end I really think it's something that that all the wallet has all the wallets have to support before it makes sense to put onion dot onion addresses in LNUL out there or run faucets behind onion complicated stuff man yeah <laughs> it's hopefully one of the say one that yeah but but at least for me this just showed a bit that that. It, it, as, as good L and URL is as something like we we, we, we can yeah. we can work yeah. right now with it, having the idea of such services in protocol like because we already have with the lightning nodes we have a we have a peer to peer network we already solved this kind of make 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 nodes reachable now we're adding L and URL to, L and URL to it what is an HTTP protocol you also have to make sure that your node is again reachable through this protocol yeah but I mean it might be that this you can you can make a new pro like third layer protocol. Yeah, I, I say I, I like the LNUL, um, um, what, the, what it gives us now at, as a feature set, but but maybe thinking about for the future having something within the protocol, really giving us similar kind of possibilities that would be well, you great. You said Keysend, you did the torch on Keysend, didn't you? You did take the court torch on Keysend from Open Arms, yeah. Yeah. which is fun. I mean, Keysend has its, I guess, benefits and downsides, but we'll see. I, these are just all new things, right? We'll see where they go. And, and like you don't, cool. like everything works perfectly until you actually try and use it. And then, and then you're like, oh, this doesn't work, and this doesn't work, because it's broken on this, isn't, and it doesn't do HTTPS, and blah, blah. so actually experimenting and playing around with stuff, and actually, you know, if you can do key send, do key send, like, you know, get your know, try and do key send with people, and then find problems with it, and then give feedback, and then we, we'll all cheat trying, yeah. I'm not entirely sure the rest, uh, like part of LND's implementation of key send works yet. I don't think it works all the way. The, the RPC does. Did you notice that as a something of a book? Yeah, I asked Yoast about it. I was like, man, I couldn't get the rest to work. And he was like, oh, yeah. Some of the like, definitions in the proto file just weren't generated. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I guess. You want, you want to get an intern yeah, on that? Rest, rest is second class citizen. Yeah. So, oh, I get you. I don't know what. Second class <laughs> API. Yeah. yeah, second class <laughs> API. I still don't know what GAPC is. I don't want to know either. No, oh, you don't. <laughs> Terrible. Is it like ACE? It's just a lot. Yeah, it's not, it's not I mean, it, it, it works fine, but it's, it's a lot. I think most developers we used to rest, aren't we? You know, like yeah. web type people. Especially coming from like PHP land. It's all, it's all the rests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the hacker language, isn't it? Build, yeah. build stuff out quick. Sinclair Fawcett PHP. It's lovely. It was a dream to go back to PHP. I loved it. P P Python, that was with Alan Bits. That's hard because it's all the indentation stuff. Yeah. It scares me. Get used to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although it all has its place, doesn't it? Right. So I think that's is that is that is that pretty much that's all of it, isn't it? I mean, thanks yeah. both. Thank you very much to to both of these guys for coming down and working on the M5 stack and the quickening project and merge them into one yeah, code base. Yeah, that was the takeaway. I think was trying to consolidate the POS terminals that you've yeah. been working on yeah. into yeah. one. Yeah, just software to make code to base. make the problem a bit clearer. So if you Ben 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 was building a lot of POS. Um, systems Gadgets. like the yeah. based on the M5 stack that which is this gray box based on on the, just yeah, on the ESP32 basic chip like with some um, something some connected to it that's a quickening and those those and a lot of other people's were building light so that it works with open node that it works oh, with 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 L and D so yeah. that it works but it's all were kind of just copied code base and yeah. just people changed well, stuff. That was me copying the code base. Oh, but other, I mean, pe people, other people, someone did BTC BTC pay server that was cool. Yeah. Other someone people were doing this too. Yeah. So Tim um, Tim gave me LMP like a really nice yeah. and that was the basis for and I think that's good for in the beginning to just fast prototype but yeah, now yes. came the time to really bring that's it to a nightmare a nightmare because you have like you have like 10 different folders with 10 different yeah, projects yeah. in yeah, and then nice. you find one improvement yeah that's the thing the new right. you find sure. you find you find one little oh it's still, oh, got the logo yeah. on there as well <laughs> sure. nice quickening logo oh, yes the they're all the way over here um yeah. oh, wi-fi not connected so there was some yeah, feedback we too yeah <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. It'd fire up a hotspot or something, but... And, and, and really, division, and division yeah. is now really to have one code base, so you flash the device with one code base. Maybe you have, before you flash it, you have maybe uncommoned uh, or comment yeah. some, if you use different hardware. Yeah. Uh, but for the, for, for the node providing services, for the payment service, you're connecting to Ellen Deep, uh, Open Node, etc. Um, this should be something that you can, in the future, do really... With Wi-Fi. In, with the config, yeah. yeah so, cool. so we really... Without having to well, reflash like, it well, like an time. example is like... What's his name on Twitter? Oh, I'm sorry, man. I, I want to give you a shout out, but I can't remember being name on Twitter. I'm sorry. We've all got silly names on Twitter. Um, there was a guy, the guy did the BTC Pay thing because because to cancel a, tra a transaction, you yeah. press that button, and yeah. then to send the transaction, you press that button. Yeah. And I kept thinking I needed like a little red cross and a green tick on the actual buttons, but the guy just wrote like cancel and oh, proceed, oh, yeah. and I, I, above yeah. the button, and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, but but that was just then one in this one, one version. Little folder. Ver, ver, yeah, it was yeah. in that version and not in yeah, the other versions. Exactly. So the idea is now exactly to to bring such. So if somebody uh, enhances something, yeah. it will be available also for the other for the other kind of implementations. Yeah, that's great. And and also the setup then is possible. Like the idea is really that uh, you flash your your device with the correct hardware settings. And then you just turn it on, and it opens up so a Wi-Fi spot, a hotspot, and then you just it says like here, log in into this SSID, this password, or something like that. And you log into it, and then you get uh, you get on the, on your browser, either on your mobile or on your laptop, a browser. You get your setups. That's stuff. the next step, isn't it? We're almost there. We're not far. We need we need another two days. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, no, there's uh, almost two weeks. So, so. <laughs> so I mean, if you so you won't, in fact you won't be able to find the branch of what we've been doing now. But like in a few weeks, it should be more apparent like that the two code bases or the two projects have merged into one. Yeah. And everything's so much cleaner. So, so watch out for that. There'll be two yeah. projects. One will redirect to the other. I don't know if I figured out which oh, one. Yeah, we don't we'll do really GitHub stars. We'll get it working, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but thanks a lot for that. It was amazing. Um, uh, but yeah, I think that's probably pretty much it. Was, um, until next time, these, these two guys are going to go fly out now from and Bristol big Airport. Big shout out to the to the uh, uh, Cardiff uh, Wales Bitcoin meetup. Uh, yeah, of course. So yeah, we went there. That was cool. It was nice uh, to hang yeah, out with some fun. with the local people. Yeah. So really, we, we were up against it at the moment because BSV realised so Cardiff Wales we have like the biggest UK meetup Bitcoin meetup, and um, the BSV lot have tried to clone our flipping meetup. I haven't seen one. Yeah, so well, whatever you know, but I mean, like it's 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 we just need more because we we're all volunteers, obviously. Um, uh, so uh, so for the for the Welsh meetup, yeah, it was quite funny actually because we went we we, we sort of like uh, gate crashed the BSV meetup, and I was very calm and collected, and like well, not as like me, um, and another guy from the the Bitcoin Cardiff meetup, and I was quite calm and I was just kind of keeping them you know keeping them in check in case they made any sort of lies against Bitcoin. And at one point, my mate stood up and he's like, "All of you." You're paid to be here. Come to our meetup. None of us are being paid to be here. I was like, dude, chill, 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 chill. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was pretty fun. But it's true. So whatever. Um, uh, but yeah, so so yeah, so we need all the support we can get. So if you're in the UK and Cardiff's not too far, then look on the Meet Hub page um, and then come to the Cardiff uh, 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 Bitcoin Wales. Let's Google Bitcoin Wales. You'll find us. And it just says BS, Bitcoin BSV Wales. Don't go to that one. <laughs> Right. Anyway, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.